Everyone, welcome. We are so glad you are here, and it is an awesome time to be gathered in the presence of the living God in Christ. Um, welcome home to St. Peter's. And one of the things I absolutely adore about being rector of a St. Peter's church is that we at St. Peter's actually have three feast days, three at Spotswood. The first is our charter day, which is all saints, uh, not all saints, which is uh, the last Sunday after Pentecost, Christ the King. That's our charter day. King George III signed our charter on that day. The second is the confession of Peter in January. And the third is what? It's today. It's the feast of Saints Peter and Paul. So, so we greedy. Are, what's that? So greedy. Not greedy, joyous. You know, oh, yes. we're fiesta folk. So we're honored to have you here. I'm just making sure that we're up and running on line and live. There we go. Wonderful, glad you're here. Um, you will see a beautiful painting of Saints Peter and Paul. Um, I, I like to imagine in this one that they're actually debating the admission of the Gentiles into the fold. You know, one of the great, um, the great confluences of the doors opening on the mission of the church is actually the debate that Peter and Paul had. And Paul calls out Peter for taking food with Gentiles and yet, uh, still being a party of the circumcision. And um, really, it's, it's their reconciliation that opens the door for all of us to walk in grace as members of the body of Christ. So we're thankful for this today. Um, there's much more to read on Saints Peter and Paul. I urge you to, if you have time today, pick up the Epistles General of Peter, give those a read. You have to take everything with a little grain of salt. Remember, he was a man of his times, but also a very wise old sage, first among equals in the apostles. And then, of course, you have the entire opus of Paul's works that we have, both those that we recognize as his and those that are ascribed to him in the New Testament. A great day to be alive and to share it in this feast. It is also the anniversary of the ordination of Mother Allison here at St. Peter's several years ago. So we bid her peace and grace and we pray for her and with her as she celebrates her anniversary of ordination. Please like and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, give us that thumbs up, join us live on Facebook as many of you had. If you have any intercessions or thanksgivings, please feel free to offer those up. We're honored to have you with us and to welcome you here into the fold of Christ's love. It's time for morning prayer. Here we go. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O God, let our mouth proclaim your praise and your glory all the day long. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please join me in unison for the antiphon and invitatory. God is the rock of our salvation. O come, let us worship. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before God's presence with a song. Know this, the Lord is God. God has made us and we are God's. We are the Lord's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter the Lord's gates with thanksgiving. Go into the courts with praise. Give thanks to God and call upon the Lord's name. For the Lord is good, God's mercy is everlasting, and God's faithfulness endures from age to age. God is the rock of our salvation. O oh, come, let us worship. Please join me in the first half of Psalm 105. I'll offer the odd verses. Please respond with the even. O oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on God's name. Make known God's deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing to him. Praises. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his, wonderful, all his works. wonderful works. Glory in the Lord's holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. 
Seek the Lord, Seek the Lord and, and his strength. Seek, Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works God has done, the Lord's miracles and the judgments that God uttered. O oh, offspring. Offspring of the servant Abraham. Children, children of Jacob. Jacob his chosen ones. ones. God is the Lord our God. The Lord's judgments are in all the earth. God is mindful of her covenant. His covenant forever. Of the word, of the word that, that he commanded for a thousand generations. The covenant that the Lord made with Abraham. God's sworn promise to Isaac. Which he confirmed, which he confirmed to Jacob as a statute. To Israel. Israel as an everlasting covenant. Saying to you, I will give the land of Canaan as your portion for an inheritance. When they were few, they were few in number of little account and strangers in it. Wandering from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people. God allowed no, no, one, to no one to repress them, them rebuke kings father. on their account. Saying, do not touch my anointed ones, do my prophets no harm. When God summoned, when summoned famine, famine against the land and broke every staff of bread. God had sent a man ahead of them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. His feet were hurt with fetters. His neck was put in the collar of iron. Until what he had said come, came to pass, the word of the Lord kept testing him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people, of the people set him free. God made him Lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions. To instruct his, instruct his officials at his pleasure, to and teach to his elders wisdom. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. When Samuel became old, he made his sons judges over Israel. The name of his firstborn son was Joel, and the name of his second, Abijah. They were judges in Beersheba. Yet his sons did not follow in his ways, but turned aside after gain. They took bribes and perverted justice. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, You are old, and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us, then, a king to govern us, like other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, listen to the voice of the people and all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them, just as they have done to me from the day I brought them up out of Egypt to this day forsaking me and serving other gods so also they are doing to you now then listen to your to their voice only you shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them so samuel reported all the words of the lord to the people who were asking for a king he said these will be the ways of the king who will reign over you he will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots and to be his horsemen and to run before his chariots. And he will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties, and some to plow his ground and to reap his harvest, and to make his implements of war and the equipment of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his courtiers, he will take one-tenth of your grain and of your vineyards and give it to his officers and his courtiers. He will take your male and female slaves and the best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to his work. He will take one-tenth of your flock and you shall be his slaves. And in that day you will cry out because of your king, whom you have chosen for yourselves. But the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, no, but we are determined to have a king over us so that we also may be like other nations and that our king may govern us and go out before us and fight our battles. When Samuel had heard all the words of the people, he repeated them in the ears of the Lord. The Lord said to Samuel, listen to their voice and set a king over them. 
Samuel then said to the people of Israel, each of you return home. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle is the song of Zechariah together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of his servant, David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. And all who sat in the council looked intently at him, and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. Then the high priest asked him, are these things so? And Stephen replied, brothers and fathers, listen to me. The glory of God appeared to our ancestor Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he lived in Haran, and said to him, leave your country and your relatives and go to the land that I will show you. Then he left the country of the Chaldeans and settled in Haran. After his father died, God had him move from there to this country, which you are now living. He did not give him anything of it as, an inherit, as a heritage, not even a foot's length, but promised to give it to him as his possession and to his descendants after him, even though he had no child. And God spoke in these terms that his descendants would be resident aliens in a country belonging to others who would enslave them and mistreat them for, for 400 years. I will judge the nation that they serve, said God, and after that they shall come out and worship me in this place. Then he gave him the covenant of circumcision, and so Abraham became the father of Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day. Isaac became the father of Jacob and Jacob of the 12 patriarchs. The patriarchs, jealous of Joseph, sold him into Egypt, but God was with him and rescued him from all of his afflictions and enabled him to win favor and show wisdom when he stood before the Pharaoh, king of Egypt, who appointed him ruler over Egypt and over all his household. Now there came a famine throughout Egypt and Canaan and great suffering, and our ancestors could find no food. But when Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt, he sent our ancestors there on their first visit. On the second visit, Joseph made himself known to his brothers. Joseph's family became known to Pharaoh. Then Joseph sent and invited his father Jacob and all his relatives to come with him, 75 in all. So Jacob went down to Egypt. He himself died there as well as our ancestors and their bodies were brought back to Shechem and laid in the tomb that Abraham had bought for a sum of silver from the sons of Hamor in Shechem. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle, the Gloria, together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlast. Amen. Hear our cry, O God, and listen to our prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern, Govern and, and uphold them now and, now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise, we praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have, have mercy. mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we, we put pray. our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And, and we, we shall pray. never hope in vain. Almighty God, whose blessed apostles Peter and Paul glorified you by their martyrdom. Grant that your church, instructed by their teaching and example, and knit together in unity by your spirit, may ever stand firm upon the one foundation, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in a prayer attributed to St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I welcome your intercessions and thanksgivings. I lift up this morning all those parents who are struggling with bills and economic crush parents who are going without food just to feed their own children. Lord, we ask that you fill them with your spirit, that you provide them ways to nourish themselves in body, mind, and soul, and that you help all of us see the need out there and share our bounty. Amen. We pray for healing for Chris and that God may watch over him and sustain him in strength. We ask your prayers for Kieran Marshall Savage and for his parents as they watch over him in the NICU. Pray for all those who grieve and are aggrieved and are struggling with that mourning. We give thanks for the ministry of the Reverend Allison Burns LaGreca. She marks an anniversary of her ordination. We give thanks for her ministry in our presence and also to the people of St. Mary's Stone Harbor. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Tuam, Kalala, and Conry, the Church of Ireland. And in the Diocesan cycle of prayer, we got a long list today. We pray for St. Peter's Church in Barnegat Light, Cape May, Point, Clarksboro, Freehold, Hamilton, Medford, Perth Amboy, Spotswood, St. Paul's Church in Boundbrook, Camden, and Westfield, Holy Apostles Church in Yardville, and the Reverend Allison Burns LaGreca, and the Venerable Dr. Allison B.H. Percival. Almighty and most merciful God, we remember before you all poor and neglected persons whom it would be easy for us to forget, the homeless and the destitute, the old and the sick, and all who have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit and to turn their sorrow into joy. 
Grant this, Father, for the love of your Son, who for our sake became poor, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us for morning prayer. Appreciate your presence. Good morning, Whopper. <laughs> the big orange cat is with us. All right, folks, please like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Give us that thumbs up. Follow us on Facebook. Let us know your prayer concerns and thoughts. We'll be sure to lift those up when we meet again at five o'clock for evening prayer. We bid you peace and grace and Whopper. Have a great feast of Saints Peter and Paul today. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.